In this video, we are going to take a look at the Unit 7 Lesson 12 practice problems. So number one has us matching each diagram, showing a sector um, with the measure of a central angle in radians. So um, maybe we can just cancel out a few that we um, can easily recognize. So all the way around a circle in radians, if you remember, is 2 pi. Okay, so all the way around is 2 pi radians. That means that halfway around, so half of 2 pi would just be pi. So this one should be pi radians. Um, so hold on. Okay, so that was number 5 went with F. Okay, so we're done with that one. And then pi, number 2, went with D. Um, and then if we kind of use that half again, so this is half of this. So half of one pi is going to be one half pi or pi over two. So pi over two, number four goes with B. So then we're kind of thinking um, that's half of a pi. So this one is smaller than a half of a pi. And this one is larger than a half of a pi. And this one's bigger than one pi. Okay, so this is going to have to be bigger than one pi. So let's look here and see if we see any that are bigger than one pi. So the fraction in front of it is bigger than one. And so we do see that here, 3 over 2. 3 divided by 2 is 1.5 pi. So number 1 must go with E. So then let's take a look at these two leftovers. So number three says pi over three, which another way to say that is a third of pi. And then number six says two pi over three, which another way to say that would be two thirds of pi. So two thirds pi and one thirds pi, this one is bigger. So this has to go with C. This is smaller, this is bigger. So C is gonna be the two thirds pi. And A is going to be the one-third pi. All right, number two, in the circle, sketch a central angle that measures two-thirds pi radians. So remember, again, what we just kind of talked about over there is, um, like, I'm just going to section off where I'm going to start. So I'm going to start here. So we're going to say this is zero. So let me actually just get a radius in there. Um, so here's where I'm going to start this angle. Now, if I went all the way to halfway around the circle, remember this would be one pi. Okay, so this is at one pi. And I only want to be two thirds of a pi. So I only want to be two thirds of this. So if I thought of splitting this into kind of three equal chunks, I only want to be two thirds of the way around. Okay, so if we did one, two, three equal parts, I only want to be two thirds of the way around. So maybe something like right there. All right, in number three, we've got angle AOC is a, um, has a radian measure. So angle AOC has a radian measure of five pi over six. And then we have this little arc here, AB is a two pi arc length with a 12 radius. And we want to find the area of this shaded sector. Um, so we can go ahead and use our definition of a radian, which is that a radian equals the arc length divided by the radius. So remember, our arc length um, is 5 pi over 6 equals, and I guess I already filled in the radius here, the arc length over 12. And so remember, this is going to be for this whole arc right here. And so we could solve for this arc length by just multiplying, cross multiplying. So just multiplying that 12 times 5 gives us 60 pi over 6 is our arc length. And 60 pi over 6 simplifies to 10 pi. So this is the length of this whole blue arc. Okay, that whole blue arc is 10 pi. So we could look at just the length of this portion since that's what we're worried about. So this portion here would be 10 pi minus 2 pi. So this portion would just be 8 pi. 
So then we could look at comparing that portion to the total circumference, since this is arc length. So the whole circumference would be 2 times pi times the radius, which is 12. So our total circumference of this circle is going to be 24 pi. So if we take our chunk divided by the whole circumference, that will tell us how much of the circle we have. So those pi's will cancel, and we're down to 8 24ths of the circle. Both of these divide by 8, so this would actually be one-third of the circle. So this is how much of our circle we have, so we want to use that to find the area. So we want one-third of the total area of this circle, and area is pi times the radius squared. So we want one-third of 144 pi, which is the area of the whole circle. So the area of this um, sector is going to be um, 48 pi. And then they did not give us units, so just units squared for that one. All right, then number four, calculate the radian measure of a 30 degree angle. Use any method you would like, including sketching in the circle um, diagram provided. So one thing I like to do when thinking about this is think about how many times I could fit a 30 degree um, chunk into the circle. So the total circle is equal to 360 degrees. So I do 360 divided by 30, and that tells me how many slices I'll be able to get in. So 360 divided by 30 gives me 12 slices. And so then you can think about slicing this circle into 12 slices. So I kind of just like to think about splitting it into one. And so each slice, um, or sorry, taking one, one slice first, so cutting it in half. So I'm going to need six slices up here and six slices down here, okay? Um, and the reason I like to do that is you're thinking in radians, remember all the way around the circle in radians is two pi radians. So halfway, okay, so from here to here is going to be pi. And how many pieces do we need to split this into? Six. So 30 degrees is going to equal pi over 6, or pi divided by 6 radians, because I know that's how many slices is equal to a 30 degree slice. So taking pi, dividing it into 6 chunks. So that's one way you could do it. Um, if you are thinking about these 12 slices, you could just think about all the way around in radians is 2 pi, and just dividing that by 12 immediately, and then simplifying. So 2 pi divided by 12, each of these divide by 2, so you'd get 1 pi over 6, and you could have gotten to it that way as well. Lynn thinks that the central angle in circle A is congruent to the central angle in circle B. Do you agree with Lynn? Show your reasoning. So if we have an arc length, okay, which we have in both cases and the radius, remember we can look at the radian by doing the arc length divided by the radius. So in this case, our arc length would be 4 pi, and our radius is 12. Both of those divide by 4. Um, and so 4 divided by 4 is 1, so we just get pi. And then 12 divided by 4 is 3. So this would be our angle measure in radians for um, circle A. Now we can do the same thing over here. Arc length, which is pi, divided by radius, which is 3. And we see that they are the exact same angle. All right, number six, um, select all statements that are true here, given these two circles. So the sector in circle B has a larger area than um, the circle in sector A. I mean, that would make sense because the angle, not only is the angle larger, so this is a 60 degree chunk versus a 90 degree chunk. So this is a larger portion of the circle and the radius is larger. So without calculating it, you can tell that that's going to be bigger because the area of this one's going to be larger with a bigger radius and you have a fourth of the circle versus here a sixth. 
Um, B, not taking into account the sectors, circle A and circle B are similar. Yes, all circles are similar. Um, C, the fraction of the circumference taken up by the arc outlining um, circle A's sector. So the fraction of the circumference is smaller than the fraction of the circumference here. So this is 60 out of 360, that's one sixth, and this is one fourth. Plus you can see this is a smaller portion. Okay, this one doesn't go as far as this one did. Okay, so this is true. The ratio of the area of circle A's sector to its total is one sixth. So the, um, the ratio of the area, this area to the total is one sixth. And that's true because it's a 60 out of 360 chunk and that simplifies to a six. The ratio of circle A's area to circle B's area, now we're comparing the two circles areas, is five nines. Well, that's the scale factor from B back to A is a scale factor of five ninths. So when we start comparing areas with scale factors, remember areas are the scale factor squared. So this is gonna be false. All right, number eight, quadrilateral A, B, C, D is shown with the given angle measurements. So, um, select all true statements. So when we look at this, we hopefully see that we have a cyclic quadrilateral, meaning that it is um, inscribed into a circle, meaning all vertices are touching the circle at the same time. And um, so let's take a look at some of these things. Angle A measures 140 degrees. So angle A is across from C. So angle C plus angle A needs to be 180. And C is 40 plus 140 would be 180. So that is true. The measure of A and D must be 180. That's false. The ones across from each other or not next to each other need to be 180. Angle A measures 55 degrees. Well, that's false. We already figured out that it's got to be 140, so it can't be 55. Um, angle D measures 55. So D is across from B. So angle D plus angle B needs to equal 180. Um, so 125 plus 55 does equal 180. So that's correct. So if we figured out D was 55, it certainly can't be 40. So just A and D in this one.